Um, <clears throat> let's start with urology match. What gave you the idea to start this project and when did it happen? And where were both of you in your training at the time? Yeah, Alex and I went to medical school at Harvard together. And we were going through the match process. It was 2002, 2003. And we just could not believe that there was more information out there on the web. It's a competitive process. And we were asking friends who come to the match and there you can get bits and pieces of, of information. We kept wondering how come there isn't a place for us to go talk with other applicants, get information from individuals who have gone through the match before. And so as we went through the match process, we started taking notes, asking other urologists, asking program directors, what is this about? How do, you, how do we maximize knowledge, engage other individuals in this process? And we started putting that on, on the uh, web. Alex, uh, a lot of us have ideas, but very few of us are able to actualize them and put them into practice. How did you proceed once you had this basic concept, which I'm sure many residents in many fields have had, how did you proceed to construct this and put it into practice? <coughs> just, just, uh, just like about any other project, you, uh, you got to break it up into parts. And so the first part of the urology match uh, venture was really to put up a guide and to create a guide for medical students. And so the whole site really started with a very simple guide, step-by-step -step process of how to become a urologist. So if you're a first-year medical student and you wanted to find out on the web how to become a urologist, we became the sort of the go-to resource on what are the steps they need to take, you know, in the first few years of medical school and then what rotations they need to do, how do they engage their uh, mentors and, and really how to succeed in the process. Um, and, uh, you know, they, it was a little bit of an afterthought idea of to create a, um, uh, a bulletin board community where people could uh, participate and interact with each other. And, you know, sort of this was uh, 2003, really 10 years ago, which had our sort of 10 year anniversary of the website. Where, where, where were the two of you then at that time? We were, we were housemates uh, at, at Coolidge Corner in Boston at Harvard okay. Medical School. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, we, I mean, I, I remember we put it up. I was, uh, you know, uh, a few weeks before I got married, and uh, I remember logging in to my email uh, in my honeymoon and having seen an email from Todd saying, "Check out this website; it's taken off." And so, I mean, we, we really filled a niche that people were looking for. I mean, they, immediately there was a tremendous amount of conversation that was happening through this very basic bulletin board that we posted. And where did the expertise in programming come from? Did you have that, or did you look for someone to help, or how did that work out? Neither of us had it. <laughs> one of, um, another one of our housemates did have some, and um, so Alex started talking more and more, more and more to him, and then just jumped in. And, and, and you know, the, the initial site was a little elementary, but it got the job done. And what about um, financing for it? How did that happen? Yeah, so I mean, initially it was uh, it was really um, a bootstrap kind of effort. I mean, we, you know, uh, the costs to starting a website are very very low, and so it was really sort of ten dollars a month for some server space and uh, to get a domain name. And then as we started growing the site, we really needed a, a a sponsor and a champion to really help create content and to pay for the server space as the as the traffic group. And uh, you know we really need to thank uh, Boston Scientific, who really saw value early on to offering you know this kind of content to students and to young urologists. Uh, and they supported us. They've supported us for many years now. Uh, and so that that kept the lights on, so to speak, in, in the urology match. Uh, so you were able to commercialize this idea and get financial returns from it? Um, it it's, um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've had a sponsor, and yeah, I mean, I, I would say, you know, the vast majority of anything that we sort of take from that, we put it right back in, whether it's in the urology match venture or this, you know, the venture that we'll talk about, this uh, invisible health drug D venture. I mean, the, the key is being, has been being able to evolve the site, and even though it started out as an incredibly directed, site towards the specific match process, engaging the other applicants on this discussion board community. In order to expand it, involve it, it's taken, you know, the ability to put some money back into it, to hire outside developers who are spectacular, mm -hmm. and, and to grow not just the appearance of the site, but how users can interact with it. And that leads me to my next question. How does the website function, and how does it 
help the medical student? How do you see it evolving now? Right. So it, it gives. So the way I really look at it is, the, and, and the reason why we've been pushing the ball forward is, I think urology match gives the medical student that's trying to look, you know, to it's trying to explore where the urology is the right place for them a community. And I think it sets us apart from a lot of other specialties where it, it makes us appear to be very organized. It, it makes us appear that we have a resource for medical students. And I think it, uh, I would like to think that it, uh, it really um, uh, attracts the cream of the crop in the medical student world to our specialty. Um, we did, we wrote up a little like, a, you know, sort of uh, a, a paper in the a Journal of, Sur of Surgical Education where we did a survey of the users and we found that I think 44%, 45% of users of the website at some point during the match process made a critical, uh, you know, the, the website and the information they got from the website, whether it was from other students posting on the site or the information on the website, they basically, it influenced a critical decision making point in their, in their match process. So. Um, I think the website really gives people a forum to uh, obtain information and then to exchange information with other students. And I know the residents come back regularly to the website and, uh, and, and really sort of uh, inject some advice, and et cetera. Yeah. Alex and I, um, you know, we love being urologists and we love turning the flag for urology as much as we can. I think a lot of the reason that we both went into academic urology is to help attract the next generation of urologists. And I, there's nothing more gratifying for us than when residents come up to us and say, hey, you know, I knew nothing about urology. I was scared, but I thought it was strange, different. Um, I, you know, I, I was only exposed to it for two days on some rotation. Then I started going through your site and learning what urology is and seeing the discussions on the discussion board. And the urologists seemed really welcoming and opening, oh, open and uh, interested. And, and so that, and then they come to us and they say, now yeah, that's what made me start thinking about going into urology. Now, how do you police the website? Because if someone wanted to destroy a program, it seems like they could have quite a big influence, expand their influence in doing that. And how do you, uh, how do you handle that problem, or potential problem? Well, yeah, so we have a number of individuals who help us monitor the discussion board. And you know, you know, our interest is really is in promoting urology. And so that's what, that's what we want to do. We want the discussion board to be an open community, an open forum for discussion, an honest discussion. But slander and individuals or programs is not something that we're looking for. So those, those things we're very careful about regulating. Yeah, and, and yeah, things have come up over the years, but th those are isolated events where, you know, they're brought to our attention and uh, they're immediately removed from the website. I, I, really, I could probably count on one hand how many times that's come up. I think people realize that this is, this is really a forum to exchange useful information and not, and not just you know, slander programs in any way. And you know, people understand the nature of discussion on um, discussion yeah. boards. And, and so um, I think when the comments are made, people take them with a grain of salt if they're negative. And again, if I mean, things that are slanderous, are, we, we don't accept on, our, on site. Uh, do you have data on the number of hits and the number of people who are future applicants that actually use the site? And um, in other words, how busy is the website? So the website gets well over a million hits a year. Um, I think it's um, about 20,000 or so unique visitors a month. And then that increases, of course, during the mass season. Um, so September, October, January, the website really goes through the roof. We really worked on sort of building more content and in order to continue to engage uh, uh, residents as they go through a residency process after the match and as you know, younger age, so we have a you know, a job guide, a financial guide, we have a fellowship guide. We sort of there's content offerings there now that are beyond the match, where it sort of brings people back to the website. Yeah, I would think a publishing company could use it to um, sell an introductory urology publication right. to people who are interested. And we, we sort of we have a little bit of a urology atlas, where you know, some for example, um, I'll be honest with you, when you know I'm in the operating room, I I need, I need to know the laser settings. Uh, we have a, we have a content offering on the website where I go to that and I look up my laser settings for you know different uh, or whether I'm an upper track or lower track for different lasers. Is is this idea easily adaptable to other specialties and are you working on this at all? Uh, yes, it is easily adaptable. It, you know, again, I think our, our interest has been as uh, as urologists pushing urology toward bringing people into urology. Um, we have so many varied interests that are really within urology, that, that just not something we've had the time to explore.
Yeah, I think you have to sort of avoid what Todd likes to call scope drift. You got to sort of keep it focused. And, uh, you know, I think the, the, the face validity of the site and uh, these are, you know, these are sophisticated users. If, if you, if you thought and I put up, a, say, an orthopedic site, I, I think there, there wouldn't be a, a lot of face validity behind it and it, it wouldn't get, gain as much traction. So you got uh, you to really sort of uh, know your audience and we feel like we know your audience best. Does this have any uh, international application? Absolutely. Well, there, there's a huge community of international urologists who go on the site. Um, a lot of really poor medical graduates looking for um, information on how to get into the program in the United States. And so there's, there's really a community of those international urologists and residents hey, discussing how do we get um, into programs, how do we do fellowships, which fellowships are, are uh, willing to to help ed take on educate like, these foreign graduates, and, and so I think they use it quite a bit. And we really are interested in, in, in their information and engage in that community. I'm also thinking about foreign training programs. Have they made any uh, efforts to get on the site? Well, it's interesting. It's um, we, we were interested <coughs> on, on on sort of U.S. residents, but as um, as sort of the social media revolution has taken off, urology matches really um, uh, been in, in, you know, participating in, in, in that whole transition and we actually got the, uh, uh, the top award for, uh, for social media engagement from the BGUI yesterday, so we're proud of that. Yeah. But, uh, so as we've engaged users from across the world in social media, sort of they're the more aware of the American match process just because of the nature of the site. But we haven't, you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge effort to really understand each process in each country. We haven't really delved into, into those areas.